to the NFL on EA Sports. The time for talk is over as we are just mere moments away from the Super Bowl. Two teams now have a chance to prove they are the best. It's the Lions going up against the 49ers. Larry, we have played 266 games in this NFL season. Only one remains, and it's the biggest of them all, as EA Sports is proud to present coverage of the Super Bowl. Tonight, it's all on the line. We play for the Lombardi Trophy. Alongside my good friend Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. We are honored to be here for the biggest spectacle in sports, the Super Bowl. Are you ready, partner? I am more than ready, and I love the word you use, honored, because it is an honor to be here. It's a privilege to be here. My excitement is just about to burst through the booth. I can't wait to do this. Well, and sitting with both of these teams and talking in the meetings and media day and all the hoopla that goes into this there was one common theme they're ready to stop the talking and start playing football yeah they were probably ready a while ago now they can just focus on it it's done the only talking they have to worry about now is post game and they hope that they'll be talking as the winning team and we'll see you know both sides come in with a game plan to start we'll see how the adjustments are made throughout because there are always adjustments in this game i want to see if they come out conservative trying to minimize errors or if they have enough confidence to attack early and try and take advantage of the other team's nervousness. Well over 100 million people watching around the world. Welcome to you all. Super Bowl 52 underway from Minneapolis. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. Bringing this 49ers offense onto the field is Jimmy Garoppolo, and he was 5-0 and as a Niners starter at the end of last year. And once he took over, Charles, you heard many in the organization say that the vibe around that building just sort of totally changed. It certainly did, and it was a franchise and a roster that was being built for the future, and they knew they were going to absorb some thumpings along the way. But the organization was all in on rebuilding from the bottom up, making it strong and when they added the piece of the quarterback and Jimmy Garoppolo and everyone started to believe boy did the Niners finish strong down the stretch do things get tougher for Jimmy G in 2018 because now there's film on and more expectations yeah similar to a pitcher or a hitter right that goes through the league it does but I think what outweighs it is the fact that he's going to get better he's going to make adjustments to his game he's still a young quarterback that's gaining more and more experience with every snap and boy oh boy the potential awfully high and this whole line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They established the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident. second down and this is Selleck here with a grab and down he'll go at the 25 that catch good for five it's third down and now the Lions defensive starters Brandon I remember when Glover Quinn came out of the University of New Mexico as a cornerback transition to the safety position his forte intelligence understanding other teams offenses where they try to attack and puts himself in a great position to make plays against the ball Third play here, this opening drive as they're up against a third and five. Right, here we go. 
A shotgun snap for Garoppolo. And he will find his man on the outside. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. Seven yards there. Good enough to move the sticks. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Green, 39! Green, 39! Now a play fake here on first down. Over the middle, that's caught by Taylor. And he's brought down, but not before getting across midfield to the 45. That one goes for 24 yards. And on this first drive, looks like they want to get that vertical passing game going early. And they did, and what a warning shot they just fired. If you're not going to back up and play coverage deep, we're going to attack you all game long. And once you adjust to that and you start to back off, then that opens things up underneath. A really nice start for them. Great way to get the game going. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. They go play action here on first down. And he finds his target. It's Marquise Goodwin. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far on the opening drive. We always talk about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. Garoppolo. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> Second down. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Pierre Garçon, the intended receiver. And now it's third down. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. He gets a good chunk of yards there, eight all told. But they're still looking at a fourth down. Okay, it didn't break that one all the way. But you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge. And that's probably exactly what he's telling them in the huddle right now. So one quarter down here in the Super Bowl. Nothing, nothing, our score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Second quarter now. Brandon God and Charles Davis with you. It's the 49ers in control of the football. They are, however, facing a fourth down situation. And the first play will be a field goal try. 
From the left hash, this will be a 41-yarder. And the 12-year veteran knocks it right through. And the 49ers take a 3-0 lead. And we were scoreless up until this point in the second quarter. Now we finally have a little action. Let's see where this action takes us. First quarter, no points at all. Now we've got our first score of the game. Well, does that signal that we're going to get more as we go along? Or will it revert back to what we saw in the beginning of the game? The punter pinion now to kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. The Detroit Lions offense will be under the direction of that man, Matthew Stafford, who in 2017 was third in the league in passing yards. Seems like he's up around the top every season, over 4,400 of them. Best yards per attempt average of his career are sort of interesting. Yeah, and how about the level he is playing? You've mentioned it already. The big thing I've liked about him is he's really cut down on his turnovers. He continues to mature as a quarterback. They've got to give him help in the running game, though. And we've been saying that for how many years in Detroit? That absolutely has to happen because if so, he will continue to ascend as one of the better quarterbacks in the league. Now a first down throw, Stafford. And this one grabbed by Darren Fells. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark it down at the 39. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. is Theo Riddick. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We'll come back on Super Bowl Sunday after this. Coming up at the intermission, we'll get highlights of this Super Bowl from Larry Ridley and the crew in Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Stafford now on second down. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Golden Tate, his intended receiver. Third down here. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. on third down. Stafford. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. On fourth down, here's Sam Martin on to kick it away. at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. 
Now, before the possession switches here, I had written down that I wanted to talk about some of the awards this past season in the NFL. We know Brady was the MVP, but Todd Gurley, Offensive Player of the Year. How about that for a bounce back? Many were questioning whether he'd had a sophomore slump the season before. Didn't even get to 1,000 yards. Was a dominant force in 2017. How about his teammate Aaron Donald yeah. on the defensive side? He took home Defensive Player of the Year award. Yeah, very impressive. They had both sides of the ball. Sean McVay deserving, I think you would agree, of Coach of the Year. Yeah, definitely. I mean, what he did for the Rams when they went from last in the league in scoring to leading the league in scoring and winning a division title. And how about the New Orleans Saints, Rookie of the Year, offense and defense. Alvin Kamara on offense, Marshawn Lattimore on defense. Give him nine there on the first down completion. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Second down, high, and he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs, and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Working from the gun, Garoppolo. And Salik here, left side. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Right, here we go. Green, 39. On second down, here's Garoppolo. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. And the Lions going with an extra DB here on third down. Watch left, watch left. Watch left. Right, here we go. From the gun, it's Garoppolo. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. Call it a one-yard gain of the play, and that'll bring up fourth down. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. 
before the offense changes hands here. Let's look back to the Super Bowl February 5th. What a game. I know you were there calling it offensively, though. Impressive on both sides. It certainly was, and let's face it, if you're in Minnesota, it's cold outside, but you talk about the offenses, they heated up in a big way. And how about Nick Foles? The backup quarterback turned MVP. 373 yards, three touchdowns, and of course, the big one receiving on the Philly special. Quite a story. As you and I were talking about off-air, it was just a fluid game. Not a lot of penalties, just really clean play. Exactly the type of game the NFL needed for the audiences at home watching the game and, of course, people in attendance. A really well-played game. And his throw here is incomplete. Eric Ebron, the big tight end, is intended target. And it's second down. But one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Second and ten, Stafford again. Now the pressure comes and he goes down. Just inside the ten, back at the nine. Take Carradine in there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of ten. Well, we knew this guy wasn't especially fleet of foot, but he tried to conjure up some escapability, but there is no way he was getting away on that one. After the sack, Stafford and the Lions come up on a third and long situation. So we've reached halftime here in the Super Bowl as we'll send you down to Orlando where Larry Ridley has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? All right, Brandon, back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, let's get you caught up on all the highlights from the first half. On the biggest stage, both offenses have been able to avoid turnovers. In a close game, though, if there is a turnover in the second half, it may be the thing that's remembered forever. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. First and 10, Garoppolo's got the completion here, and he'll end up at the 45-yard line before being tackled. 49ers would later kick the field goal. 49ers now later on the drive. Defense will get to the quarterback here. This one ends up as a loss of six. second. Carradine's going to push his way to the QB here. This will go as a loss of 10. That'll do it for our final halftime show of the year. One half remains in this Super Bowl. To bring it to you, let's rejoin Brandon and Charles. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. The Lions offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. They're down here, but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk? when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission. Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. Here's Reddick. 
And he's going to get about seven yards on that one up to around the 33. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. They go back to Reddick. And a big play there on second down, but we do have a flag on the field. This is in the area where it might be coming back. Holding offense. So a decent game, but all for naught on the penalty. That's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Second down, here's Stafford. It's complete to Golden Tate. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. An extra DB for the 49ers now on third. From the gun, here's Stafford. He's going to float this one deep right side. Now a clash of bodies here, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the safety, Jack Whiskey Tart. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, I tell you, Brandon, this ball's intercepted, but it is third down. So the silver lining is that since this is so far down the field and there wasn't a big run back associated with it, really this kind of works like a punt. It's not an altogether bad result. Here's a look at the 49ers offense as they make their way out for their first possession of the second half. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone you know not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. So after the INT, it's Garoppolo. And he finds a man with a crossing route. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. To give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. First is Garoppolo. The first catch of the game for George Kittle. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. I don't know whether I want to be a fly on the wall or not when they hear the explanation of how he, one of the bigger targets on the field, the tight end can be that wide open and uncovered downfield. Who blew that assignment? Somebody did. No doubt about it. There's no way you're not going to account for him. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. On first down, Garoppolo. Over the middle, and he's got Goodwin complete. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A really nice gain of 25 yards. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but 
the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen. But everyone's talking, communicating, pointing, and it keeps you from chasing receivers because you have a specific zone you have to cover. When a receiver's in your zone and he crosses to another one, you got to let your guy know. They got a completion there, but I like the discipline they showed to stay in their proper areas and then make the tackle. Back now here on EA Sports. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. Time is starting to run out, really becoming a factor. We'll see if the defense can get the stop they need to get the ball back to the offense. down a run with Hyde trying to bounce it outside but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage no gain on the play there second down and in this situation with the lead fourth quarter they're liking keeping the ball on the ground I'm sure that's just smart football but you know the defense has to know it as well they've got to stop them here so now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. And after the good game last play, this time they say, ah, oh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. He lost four there, and it's third down. champion after this. So it's 49er football here as we get you reset. They're facing a critical third down now as they try to hold on to this lead. as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. He made his first, this from 47 yards out. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And that will add three more to their lead. It pushes it up to six. So they get the three here, but you wonder whether that's going to be enough. Yeah, I mean... You've now made it so they need a touchdown rather than a field goal to catch them. But you're right. If they'd gotten six out of that drive, this would be a much different game. now to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. They'll <laughs> bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. 
Getting set to go again, Matthew Stafford trots back onto the field. This is something we've seen many times over the course of his career. Can he pull off another fourth quarter comeback? And it's very strange, isn't it? Because when it's a player of this magnitude, even though the guys on defense have the lead and are sitting in the best spot, they're maybe the most nervous people in the stadium because they've seen this happen to too many people before, too many teams. They've got to find a way to shut him down. Here we go again for the grizzled vet. Back to throw. His throw incomplete. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Second down now after the incompletion. He's back to throw. To the right side to Eric Ebron. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. He'll look to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. What a Super Bowl this has been, and the biggest play comes now. It's fourth down. They'll look to throw. Now a desperation throw. Oh, well, this is taken in. It's complete. That one goes for 34 yards. And the Lions are going to have a first. Back to throw. And he hits his tight end, Ebron. Second down now after the pass completion. Stafford. It's brought in left side by Tate. Eight yards on the pickup there, and it moves the sticks. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Stafford. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Tate. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. And with just over 40 seconds now remaining, he gets up and spikes it. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Now Stafford. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. 
Malcolm Smith in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. Desperation time for Stafford on fourth down. And they do get him down, but not before he reaches the four-yard line. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as he'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. So the offensive unit called the T.O., and now we are ready to resume play. From the four-yard line, it's first and goal now. Now Riddick. And now running right through it. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. And the San Francisco 49ers will hoist the Lombardi Trophy as Super Bowl champions. And to the Super Bowl champions, they etch their name forever in NFL immortality. That's pretty phenomenal right there. It actually gave me chills just to hear you <laughs> say that because immortality forever and ever. When you look in the record books, you'll see this team, you'll see their picture, that your name will be a part of it. That's got to be an incredible feeling because it's been a long journey to get there, and now they get a chance to enjoy it. And they are the Super Bowl champs. The Lombardi Trophy is theirs, and so are bragging rights for an entire season. What a season it has been. Feels like we have been there every step of the way. Our entire crew doing a wonderful job. Thanks to my broadcast partner, Charles Davis. For all those guys, I'm Brandon Gunn signing off. We'll talk to you next season right here on EA Sports.